This video looks at the idea of a tetrad as an orthonormal local inertial reference frame and looks at how it is constructed from coordinate basis vectors. It follows this up with some examples of its use, including the Schwarzschild space time. Right, so in general relativity, a tetrad, or in German is a Wirbahn, I hope that's correct, is a set of four orthonormal vector fields with one time like and the other three space like axes that are defined on a Lorentzian manifold in order to model space-time. Now the integral curves formed by the geodesics, of which these time-like unit vectors are tangent to, the tangent bundle, are the world lines of observers in space-time. Each event P on these world lines has a spatial triad associated with it that these observers carry with them. Now, a tetrad is also called a frame field, and while calculations in general relativity are often done in the coordinate basis, it can sometimes be useful to work in a local orthonormal basis, especially when measurements are involved. All right, so imagine a congruence of time-like geodesics. Here we are, the red lines here, the red curves. That covers space-time, with the time-like vectors being tangent to these geodesics. One such example here, so that they are the world lines of some observers. So the... Uh, the congruence of curves, meaning that for each point in space-time, only one curve, one geodesic, passes through it. And together they form a congruence. The time-like vector here, in this case a unit vector here with the hat, is tangent to the world line. And at each point here, um, the observer carries with them a set of spatial axes, of which two are shown here. Now, tetrads are geometric objects that are independent of the coordinates used. So remember, the time-like vector is tangent to the geodesic, the world line of the particle. Observers in space-time follow geodesics, and those geodesics are their world lines. All right, next bit. So the three space-like vectors can then be thought of as defining the spatial coordinates of a local laboratory frame carried along with these observers. So here's your laboratory frame here, here's your observer, and the three space-like vectors, E1, E2, E3 here. Um, right. So an observer in space-time can be thought of as contained within a small laboratory that moves along a time-like world line. So in, for the signature metrics I use in these videos, ds squared is less than one for the line element. Observations are made with respect to the axes, and the clock of this laboratory as they form an orthonormal basis in which the observer is at rest. So you can imagine it, an observer carries their own laboratory along with them and their axes are made with respect to the laboratory frame. That's their local inertial reference frame. So vectors are often written in terms of the four coordinate basis vectors in the form. Any a vector in general, just x, is x mu, E mu, the coordinate basis vectors, which are also, this notation is used to describe them as well. All right, so let's begin to form an orthonormal tetrad basis by assigning to each point x mu of space time a set of orthonormal axes, gamma subscript m, at each point x mu. There's four of them, time like, and the three spatial directions. And we often represent them in this form here. So they form an orthonormal basis, okay? Uh, the hats indicating um, magnitude 1 and orthogonal to each other at each of magnitude 1. Now these axes form a, locally in, a local inertial frame at each point, or locally inertial frame at each point, which means the scalar product of these vectors satisfies the Minkowski metric. So gamma m, each of these axes, gamma m, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, um, and the scalar product of them is just the scalar product of these objects here, which is just the Minkowski metric, because they are orthonormal. All right. Now we associate with each of these tetrads a set of local coordinates that are valid only in the region around this frame. So the observer in that laboratory, <coughs> following a geodesic, sets up local coordinates, xm, and here they are. Now, a local coordinate interval is then given by dx, the little increment dx vector here is gamma m dx mu, or this object here, dxm. Notice a hat for um, orthonormal 
unit length and all orthogonal to each other. Now with line element, ds squared is dx dot dx, is this object here. I worked out Minkowski metric here times these objects. So for example, if we choose in Cartesian coordinates, ct, x, y, and z, we get the familiar Minkowski line element here. Or interval, space-time interval, ds squared. And notice the signature I'm using here, negative one, uh, negative plus, plus, plus. All right, now to create a tetrad, let's begin by defining an orthonormal vector in this system to be given by a vector that's going to be of unit length and orthogonal to the others. We're going to define it in this format here. Okay, what we notice now is here's the coordinate basis vectors here, these symbols here, and then there are these scalars in front. Now where this scale is, uh, this quantity here is a scalar that normalizes each basis vector and you'll see how that works. So for example, in Minkowski space-time interval and spherical polar coordinates, this object here, where the relationship between coordinate basis vectors and their associated orthonormal basis vectors, each of which belong to the tangent space is, here you go, so E, T, E, R, E, theta, E, phi are the coordinate basis vectors and then you have these scalars in front which normalize them so that the magnitude of these, in other words, E phi hat dotted with itself, will be all of this, which will give us one. So these scalars out here normalize it. Next bit. Now just be aware modern texts use uh, for the metric here, this uh, bold G subscript mu is, is equal to the coordinate basis vector here. So that in the coordinate basis, the metric is E mu, these are coordinate basis vectors here, this one and this one are identical, this one and this one, just two different ways of representing the same thing, but what's important is we're talking about the coordinate basis here, is this dotted with itself, uh, dotted with this object here. Now the individual orthonormal vectors that define our axes can now be written as, using this notation here, gamma n, remember that was our unit magnitude axes there, vectors pointing in the, each of the directions here with unit magnitude, is then the coordinate basis vector times this scalar here, which will normalize things, or the scalar times this object here. Two different representations, but uh, meaning the same thing. So an example, our spherical polar coordinates case, we have gamma n applying this formula here. Let's just have a look at the um, axes in the phi direction, E3 phi d phi is this object here, and is this, which we know to be this unit vector, E phi hat. Now we can invert this relationship to get G mu by itself is this scalar. Notice this one, the, notice the range of the indices here, the M up, the mu down, whereas here the M was down and the mu was up. And we'll talk about what those mean shortly. <clears throat> So there must be an inverse to this, and here we go. All right, and that means that G is this object here, is this dotted with this, all right, and gives us this object here. All right, so the line element is given by ds squared is this, which is this, and this hints now at another object we can pull out of this shortly. So notice now that the Greek indices mu nu label the coordinates, and I mentioned that earlier and said I'd get back to it. So mu and mu are labeling the coordinates used, while the Latin indices mn label the tetrad axes. So you have the coordinates um, of the manifold on the whole, global manifold, and then you have a local tetrad axis at each point on the manifold, and we're going to label each of the axes with the M and N. Now from the above we can see the means by which we can define the tetrad covectors or one forms in the cotangent space or cobasis to be the following. And as before we had the M down below, now we've got it up top because we want the covectors or one forms, the cobasis or the vectors in the cotangent space. And that gives us this object here, this scalar in terms of this one form here. All right, so again, looking at the Minkowski line element, we have, here it is, and from which we get, now the one forms are these objects here, this set here of one forms, 
or co-vectors, here they are. So for example, gamma m, the uh, general rule for the co-vectors now in the um, tetrad is this object here. So for instance, the, the phi direction we have, e3 phi dx, uh, dx phi, is this object here, which is e phi hat, of course, the co-vector. Now the relationship of the components of the vectors and the one forms can be seen to follow the Kronecker delta for the m and n indices for the tetrad, but also the Kronecker delta for the coordinate indices mu and nu. Here we go there. All right, so for example, let's take the phi direction again and use this relation and we see that E3 phi is this object here, R sine theta, we were just looking at it, and from earlier E lower 3 upper phi was this object here, this scalar here, and we see that they give us 1. Now, for spherical polar coordinates, the matrix of tetrad components of the tangent basis is given by, and these are the components for our vectors in the tangent basis, now, let's look at how this works in the Schwarzschild geometry using the coordinate CTR theta phi. And the Schwarzschild line element is this again. Now the cotangent space or co-basis vectors are given by, see the M up top there for the co-vector, EM mu there, DX mu. All right, co-vectors, the cotangent space. Now the individual vectors in this are, you can read them off from here, is E0 upper T dxt is just C D T from here, and you can see it's just the square root of this object here. For the radial direction here, what is the um, object here? And the basis vector in the cotangent basis in the radial direction, this object here is this, and you can read that off from there, just the square root of that. And similarly for the theta part, and here we go, e2 theta, dx theta, rd theta, and same finally for the phi part over here, e3 phi d phi is this object here. So there's the individual vectors, which means that the components are just reading them off from the vectors are these objects here, and that's this matrix here. All right, now the tangent space the tangent space basis vectors are given by, remember in the tangent space, the basis vectors, this object here, remember E subscript mu is the coordinate basis vector, then we multiply by this scalar which normalizes it. And so we get E0 T dt is this object, E1 R dr is this object, and E2 theta d theta, here we go, E3 phi d phi, that object there. So there's our basis vectors in the tangent space for our tetrad. Remember, the m is for the tetrad. The mu is for the coordinate basis vectors. So we have two different things happening here. We have the coordinate basis vectors. We act on them with these scales here to produce the tetrad basis vectors. All right, so the components are, just reading off again here, now we use the matrices E lower M upper mu and E upper mu, M sorry, lower mu to transform from the coordinate frame to the tetrad frame. So whether we're in the tangent basis or the cotangent basis, we want to go from the coordinate frame to the tetrad frame. Now the coordinate indices mu nu are raised and lowered using the usual metric, G mu nu and its inverse, G upper mu nu, and the tetrad indices are raised or lowered using the gamma MN or gamma lower MN. Right now, at every event p on some geodesic, there is a tetrad that forms a local inertial reference frame that is valid for the region nearby, and only for the local region nearby, not for the whole manifold, obviously. It's only for the local nearby region. And in this region, the laws of special relativity apply. All right, so we have, here's our congruence of geodesics in red again. Here's at point p, any point. Um, and here's the time-like vector here, and here's our spatial vectors carried along. Obviously, I can't show the third one, so it's suppressed, but you can see here's a, an observer moving in space-time, tangent to the world line, and you can see that local to them, in the region close to them, this is a local inertial reference frame.
so long as they don't go too far beyond their region. So in special relativity, observations are made by observers both at rest in an inertial frame and with respect to the axes of that frame, hence our axes here. And that's it.